A brand new development update from 343 about Halo Infinite has just been dropped. They went to talk with the Sandbox team to talk about things like equipment and how it works within Halo Infinite, the combat doctrine, how they changed hunters within Halo Infinite, and the possibility of the Falcon returning. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news and informational video when it comes to the Halo. If you like these kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this and it greatly helps out the video and channel. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe to keep yourself up to date. So let's get right into the video here. Oh my gosh, guys, like this is not just like a blog update that you normally receive. This thing is an absolutely massive behemoth development update that we received about Halo Infinite. So in this video, I'm going to try to give you some of the highlights of this development update, but we're going to be releasing sequential videos after this as well, going into much greater detail that's much needed for a lot of these topics that they talk about. So make sure you follow the channel and let's get right into it. First thing they mentioned is that they're looking to release these blog updates every last Thursday of every month. Now they didn't mention about how they're doing it this month. It did sound like they're kind of be skipping February. It might be doing March and then April and May afterwards as well. So we will be getting monthly development updates at the end of the month, much like we did with the Master Chief Collection, but now they pretty much traded it out for Halo Infinite, which I'm all for that. They even said that if you have any questions you would like to have answered, go on social media, especially Twitter with the hashtag Ask343 to hopefully get your question added into a future blog update or give a sense of what people want to know about Halo Infinite. So you heard me at the top of this video talk about the Sandbox team. What exactly is the sandbox. Well, the sandbox is basically everything the player interacts with. It's like vehicles, equipment, weapons, and all other objects are within Halo Infinite. Well, that's why this blog update is so massive because this is literally everything that you can do in the game, they work on. And so it's a very intensive process for the sandbox team. And it seems like 343 is putting a huge emphasis on that sandbox to kind of give players things to do and activities and different abilities as well. And the reason why it's such a great thing to hear that 343 is putting an emphasis on the sandbox is because ever since Halo Reach, they've been trying to mess with the formula of Halo by trying to not only just expand on the sandbox, which is what happened with Halo 1 through 3, with Reach and Beyond, what they try doing is adding in player abilities that kind of give you a, another element that kind of are inherent to the player, which really messes up the balance of what Halo originally has. So it's hard to give players brand new abilities like we had in 4, in Reach, and in Halo 5 without it really losing that feel of Halo. The one big section they really focus on here is what they call the Combat Doctrine. This is a basically a document that they kind of wrote up to kind of talk about all the core aspects of what Halo is. Part one of it is the dance. What they kind of talk about that is basically the, your standard gunfight within Halo Infinite. And while they want that to feel very classic to Halo gameplay, that's why like with Halo 4 and 5, they really messed with that dance. And they're trying to bring it back more to the roots right there. Tools of engagement, obviously the items that you utilize in the game. They want you to feel like a super soldier. They don't want you to feel like some regular guy in some regular shoes. They want weapons and equipment to have a distinct feel and skill and effectiveness to them. Lone Wolf is another pillar, basically mentioning that how they want to make the player feel powerful enough to where they can survive on their own, that they don't need teammates per se, or have to deal with AI companions a whole lot. I think this is probably more focused towards the single player side of things, but they also do mention about how they look at also to bring over that kind of philosophy to multiplayer as well. But obviously they do mention in here as well that uh, it does involve a lot of teamwork when it comes to multiplayer side of things, but they do want you to feel powerful enough where you can feel like you can make a difference within the battlefield. Connected actions is a very important thing. Basically, this is the player's actions, you know, the frictionless responsiveness of the players of how the game feels. A really cool thing within this pillar that they mentioned that since they've been developing Halo Infinite on PC alongside with the console version for the first time, I think, ever, that they mentioned about how they led them to rebuild the control scheme for Halo Infinite so now players can fully rebind and remap their controls regardless of platform. So to me, that sounds like if you're a controller player, you don't have to be stuck with recon or bumper jumper or green thumb. You can just 
do whatever you like, which sounds absolutely incredible. And the last pillar of that one being survivability in the combat doctrine. This is kind of giving the player the sense of understanding their vulnerabilities and being able to identify threats within the game itself. Uh, they do mention specifically here about saying max shield value, shield stun time, and shield recharge time. Trying to get that just right because I think every Halo is kind of messed with tweaked in that with that a little bit. Obviously, you don't want your shields recharging super fast because it kind of makes you feel invincible, but you don't want to be in super slow where you feel like if you take a shot, you're going to take forever to recharge up. So it's just kind of hit that nice sweet spot for Halo Infinite specifically. I think just going over this doctrine really kind of shows that they're really kind of working from the ground up to make Halo Infinite a great game for Halo Infinite while also taking influences from new games and older games together to try to come back with something that can be unique for Halo to kind of give you the proper feel for this game. Talking about bringing aspects from the old games, they do mention the Golden Triangle, which if you guys don't know, it's a philosophy that was brought up during the Bungie days where basically it's your ways of dealing out damage. Weapons, melees, and grenade. That's the way you deal out damage in this game. The Grand Pound and Spartan Charge, I'm sorry, you're just gonna have to Stay in Halo 5. A big section they go into is talking about the equipment. Bringing it back in, it looks like they're trying to replicate that Halo 3 feel when it comes to equipment in Halo Infinite. They do mention here that they want the equipment to perform very similarly to campaign and multiplayer. Obviously that makes sense, they kind of have that continuity so you understand what it is. They want it to be simple but effective and a good way to kind of change the battle into your favor. But this is why putting all these different kind of abilities in the sandbox makes it so much easier for 343 to do the development because they do say that they want to bring it in with multiplayer and campaign. Sometimes some equipment might not just work. In that case, you can just remove it off the map and trade it out for something different or just tweak that. When in, back in Halo 5, when you had like abilities as a player itself, it's fundamental to the game, which really messes with the core aspects. That's kind of what Reach fell into. Continuing on, they mentioned about how they want the equipment to be paired well with maps, modes, weapons, and vehicles, and see how they can be effective in different ways. But they want these equipment to have basically a low skill floor, so it's easy to use, but high skill ceilings where you can find unique ways to utilize them, which is exactly what we need in a Halo game. I feel like that might have been the biggest critique I think of Halo 5's multiplayer was that the skill floor was a little too high. All the advanced movements and different kind of abilities you had in Halo 5 was just a little bit too much for just like your casual player to have some fun in. I mean, I try playing with my friends and they're like, what's all this extra stuff? I don't want to do this. This is too much effort. I just want to go play some simple games. They also go into some of the weapons and vehicles as well. I think these do deserve their own videos. So I will make their own videos on the vehicles and weapons as well. Essentially what they're kind of saying that they want each weapon and each vehicle to serve a purpose, to be unique in the sandbox, where previously, like especially in Halo 4 and Halo 5, there was a lot of redundancy when it came to vehicles and weapons. And they want to try to limit that down a bit to where each weapon definitely does feel different. Like for example, the Ravager that we saw in the campaign demo actually has been changed completely actually. Its role in play style has been pushed to allow more area of denial kind of play rather than just being like a straight up launcher, just to give it some unique aspect. And another new thing that they're bringing in for equipment actually, they didn't say what it is, but they definitely hinted at it pretty hard on this one. Saying that's highly physics based and has a ton of interactions with the sandbox and it said that you'll leave you laughing and yelling the fact of did you just see that is a direct quote from the developer talking about this new physics based equipment so definitely interesting for sure now this next section here they talk about their favorite part about halo infinite their favorite vehicle weapon equipment and so whatever uh quentin del hoya who's the lead of the sandbox team mentioned this specifically which got my hopes up really high for the Falcon to return in Halo Infinite. Stating, one of my favorite sandbox items is a vehicle that we haven't shown yet, but I'm sure I won't be alone with my favoritism once we do reveal it to the community. This vehicle isn't totally brand new, but has received a fresh coat of paint while awaiting its triumphant return to Halo. When I hear that, I just think of either the Falcon or the elephant returning in Halo Infinite. Now why I think the Falcon's coming back is because a while back 343 did post their audio recording session that they did last year and an interesting one they showed they showed a helicopter in one of those which obviously the Falcon uses propeller blades on there but it also uses jets and in that same recording they showed a jet taking off as well so what vehicle utilizes jets and propellers 
a falcon. Now our developer here matches their favorite new part and it's actually a new vehicle it sounds like coming into Halo Infinite. Mentioning here saying we are working on a new vehicle that looks pretty hot. This new vehicle will sit nicely between the Warhog and the Scorpion in terms of power level so it should ignite some new discussions on what vehicle to take to a mission. Now there are some hybrid kind of vehicles already in Halo lore, especially from Halo Wars. Though the Cobra and Wolverine definitely do cross that line between Tank and Warthog. We could see these coming into Halo Infinite. So an interesting thing, they really kind of put an emphasis on two words of hot and ignite, which we don't really see too often. So maybe it's a flame based vehicle. Possibly, I don't know. Did you mention about be able to take it on a mission? Maybe just with its semi-open world that Halo Infinite has, you can just grab a vehicle and put it into a mission, just kind of go, or maybe you select it, I don't know. And lastly for this video, I know I did mention about the Hunters changing a little bit in Halo Infinite. The last section in development update with Joseph Staten goes into talking about his encounter while playing Halo Infinite's campaign against a Hunter. He mentions how he was kind of doing the classic moves that you normally do as you walk up close, get them to do the a big swing attack, sidestep them, shoot them in the back. But in this game, it seems like that trick is not exactly going to work as the Hunter is able to turn around fast enough to where you won't be able to do that simple back shot to do it to him. But he mentions about how he utilized a grapple shot to kind of work his way around the whole situation. He didn't want to spoil anything, but it does seem like you have to utilize the sandbox a little bit more against these hunters to be sounding kind of like a true kind of mini boss battle in a way, which that's super exciting because let's be honest, like the hunters are super cool and stuff like that. But if you know how to do the sidestep kind of move on them, they're kind of negligible. So it would be really interesting to see how they interact with them in Halo Infinite. But guys, that's just the tip of the iceberg in this development update. We have more videos coming out on this development update, guys, because there's so many things you can dive deep into in this thing. But I definitely will be releasing videos moving forward. If you want to catch up more videos and miss anything from me recently, check out the videos on the screen right here. I got a link to all my news and informational videos been on the loop for the last few days or so. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.